one. Hey guys, welcome to this very special TFL Classics behind the scenes video. Normally you've got Tommy on this channel, but today you've got me and Brendan behind the camera. Hey Brendan. Hey, how's it going guys? And this is a really fun video because we are here at the specialty car auction at the Good Guys Show at the Budweiser Event Center in Loveland, Colorado. And we're gonna give you a sneak peek of some of the cars that are for sale. And there's a very special truck here, Brendan, that I can't wait to show you. But let's start with this because this is the one that you're selling. Tell me about this truck. Yeah, so this is a 1982 Dodge Ram D150 that we picked up and did a few videos here on the channel. And it's going up for auction tomorrow, no reserve. It's only got 61,000 original miles on it and it's a slant six tower of power with a four-speed manual watch out you've got a very special car coming through here check that out Holy that cow. is of course a brand new c8 corvette that is also being auctioned off now of course the c8 corvette is unobtainium for much of the consumer buying corvette world because it's so popular i got to get behind the wheel with Tommy when it first came out and I gotta tell you that is one badass car but you know at heart I'm a truck guy so uh, should we pop the hood on this and show them the uh, tower of power sure here I'll take the camera here go ahead you you go and uh, pop the trunk because look let's face it the CA Corvette is cool but this my man I'm gonna say this is as cool yeah and this is something that uh, most people can afford right yeah and and did you put a reserve on this? No, this is running no reserve tomorrow. So whatever it gets, that's what it's gonna sell for. And uh, you know, we did a, a bunch of work to this too. I had complained in one of the previous videos that this had quite a lack of power, but we adjusted the carbs and cleaned that air filter. And it is running really good now. So if you guys are in the market for a bone stock original, Tower of Power 1972, ram that yeah. even he, has the little uh, even ram. has the ram hood ornament i went out and that was the number one thing in the comments that i saw from you guys that this needed to be on the truck and i made sure that that happened so come on by tomorrow and be sure uh to bring your credit card or cash i'm sure they will take cash so let's look at some of the other vehicles that are for sale here now i, I know this one is special because Tommy has a thing for Volkswagens. This is a 1966 Survivor. So what you're getting is a much quieter exhaust note than the C8. But it's pretty much all original. When I say original, I'm sure, I'm gonna guess at this, but I'm sure the engine's not original. These things never have original engines. Yep, it's a, a only a 16, it's a 1600cc engine uh, with 24,000 or is that? Yeah, 24,343 miles. Holy cow. Yeah, yeah. That's pretty low. Show the inside, dude. Yeah, the inside looks really nice, actually. It, it, for an original car from this old, that's yeah. really nice. Yeah, this would be a perfect project car for somebody who wants a Beetle. And you know, uh, people think that the Beetle is the most popular car ever made. It is not. Guess what it is? Oh my gosh. Is it, is it the F-150? It is not. That's a truck. <laughs> but you're, you're, you are on the right path. The most popular car in terms of the number of units or examples produced is the Toyota Corolla. Holy cow, yeah, I would have never guessed. Yeah, I think this is like 20 million, and I want to say the Corolla is 30 million. If I get that wrong, feel free to correct me in the comments. <laughs> All right, let's go look at some of the other cool vehicles that are being sold here. Uh, and this is, look at that. You know what that is, right? This? That, that one. Now, we know what the C8 is. The Crosley? Yes, you got yes. it. Yes, check out the Crosley wagon. How cool is that? Look at yeah, the patina I'll, on this thing. I'll be honest, I'm uh, I'm a little tempted to bid on this one myself tomorrow. I it's really just, like. It's just badass. I like the little. This. I like the little like you know uh missile nose on this thing <laughs> they weren't worried about what would happen if he hit somebody back yeah pedestrian then, safety was not a thing <laughs> this is a 1948 crosley wagon two-door it says 51,595 miles uh which uh you know i guess is good for a crosley well and look this has got some of that wood paneling on the side too that's pretty cool i know look at this quick and easy you think that's originally from 1940? It just might be because that, that is falling apart in my hands. <laughs> and then I was reading too that this actually has a Ford flathead V8 Get out. in it as well. Really? Yes, that's what I was reading on it. Well, and look at the California license plate, the original black and gold or yellow plates. Those are really cool. Unassuming, but very cool. All I right, like let, that let, let me show you another car that I'm a little bit more familiar with. You know, I get out of my depth when I get past like the 60s, uh, but I do feel very comfortable with Jaguars. <laughs> 
because I got into doing automotive journalism, you know, like 12 years ago, and, and I actually got to, you know, test drive these when they were still a thing. Uh, this is a 1997 Jaguar XK8. As you know, we just purchased the convertible version of this for our series that we're doing over at TFL Car. So tomorrow, we've got a really fun episode going up where we actually did a zero to 60, 60 to zero, and then we did a car wash where we went through the car wash and saw just how much they leaked. And we're comparing this car, representing Britain, to a Z, representing from the 90s uh, Japan, to a Mercedes SL, representing Germany, and of course, Tommy's driving the Mustang GT convertible. Uh, so that's over at TFL Car. Uh, on Saturday, so be sure to check that out. What do you think? You like it? Yeah, I like these. Yeah. You know, they look pretty nice for what they are, and um, yeah, I've always been kind of interested in them. The only thing that worries me a little bit about them is the electronics, honestly. Yes, I think everybody's <laughs> got that worry when it comes to Jaguar. The one thing I did find out is it's a little, uh, it's a little small for me. I sit, I'm pretty tall, I'm 6'2", and so I look into the top of the C-pillar, which is interesting because I, I thought that the Brits would make a car that's, uh, you know, a little bit bigger. All yeah, right. they're definitely a little cramped in All there right, Well, let's, sure. let's go from one Ford. Oh, sorry, sorry. I mean, one, <laughs> so a 1999 Ford Bob Jaguar. So this was pre-Ford. But let's go to another Ford, uh, and that is, of course, over here, uh, the Model A. What do you think of the Model A? Now we've really changed gears. Check this out, dude. This is a really... Looks like a pristine example of a Ford Model A. Holy cow, that is nice inside. I just can't imagine what it's like to drive something like this. I've never driven something this old. I have driven a Model T. They're not easy to drive. The pedals are all wrong. There's a little retard spark over here. It's all goofy. They have like this cotton belt for the transmission. It's a, it's, it's a thing that Tommy is, so Tommy wants to do a series. He's looking for a Model T and he wants to take it. He thinks it'd be funny to like take it through the drive through of a <laughs> Starbucks or something, right? And I get that, uh, but this is more normal, right? This is where it became like, you know, regular transmission. You don't need to retard the spark. Uh, and this is where, you know, the, the, the modern car was born. What do you think? Do you think a Model T would be more interesting for the channel or a Model A? I mean, a Model T might be more interesting, but a Model A might be more uh, realistic so to 19, get it down the road. <laughs> 1929 sedan, uh, 20,099 miles, huh? Holy cow. Yeah. That is crazy. Yeah. Someone didn't like driving this thing, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> And the Ooga horn. Ooga. Oh. Ooga. <laughs> Love that. <laughs> okay, that alone right there, that would make some good content, I think. <laughs> I think so, too. So, once again, we seem to have a plethora of 60s muscle cars, right? This is uh, here uh, during the Good Guys show. And if you've ever been to a Good Guys show, you know that it's a lot of muscle cars, a lot of 60s, a lot of 70s cars. But uh, let's switch gears again, and let's look at this little motorcycle. Check this out, dude. I have no clue what this is, but it's cute as get out. I think this is a Cushman, isn't is it? Is it a Cushman? You're right. Our it's a 57 Cushman with sidecar. That is cool. That is cool. I love the color on there. Look at that. Oh, man. That is pretty. That is a pretty little motorcycle. If you got this, I would be okay riding in the sidecar. Would you? Would you be my, you know what? Sure. Would you ride? <laughs> <laughs> I'd ride along in there with you. Yeah. Our old dog was a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And then, of course, right next to it, you've got, you know, uh, kind of a hot rotted out uh, uh, Chevy next to a BMW 750 Li, which is a long wheelbase car. Kind of crazy. Yeah, a little bit of everything, yeah, that's yeah. for sure. But I want to show you, um, well, I'll, we'll get to the vehicle I love the most here. Can you guess, out of all of these, which one I would bid on? Can you guess? I'm guessing it's that uh, red power wagon. Exactly, you yes. got it right. Let's go <laughs> check that out. So uh, the power wagons have become super collectible uh, over the last 10 years have exploded. Um, some are selling as much as 100,000, believe it or not. Holy cow. Um, so this is obviously a power wagon. The power wagon was a civilian version of like a World War II truck, right? Uh, so incredibly slow. It was used by like the Forest Service or fire departments, uh, but incredibly capable. So of course, uh, four wheel drive, massive winch, uh, you know, and uh, a very basic truck, but a truck that could go, oh, it's locked truck that could go anywhere. Let's see what year this is. Let's go look at the little... Oh, it's kind of hard to see with my reflection. Yeah, you probably can't see in there. This is a 47 power wagon. Flathead 6, 32,000 miles. There we go. Flathead 6, this thing can't be super fast, no, that's for sure. I, I think 45 might be the top, top speed on this. 50 if you're going downhill and 51 if it's windy, you know, going downhill. 
<laughs> <laughs> it's sure a cool truck though. I think I was saying earlier, this is kind of like the Humvee from the 40s before there was the Humvee. You know, you could have the military spec vehicle on the road back, you know, what they fought in in World War II. Brendan, that is a very astute observation. I, I am <laughs> impressed. You are exactly right. I should have thought of that myself. We've got a you know wooden bed, uh, and looks like somebody's taking some time and effort with this oh, that's um, cool. to, to get this you know almost like showroom. I bet you this is nicer than showroom. I bet you the you know when this was sold, it wasn't this clean. Uh, yeah, I would guess so. And then of course you know if you're going to be talking about like classic American trucks, well these guys are going to look at them right now, but look at that, a classic Blazer, right? This is when uh, uh, Blazers were still big old trucks as opposed to kind of silly crossovers. Look at that. Kind of hard to beat a uh, truck with that can seat, what, five people? Yeah, let's see what year is this. Take it's the 75, top off. 75. You guys got the top for it too? Yeah, it's beautiful. I love the color. How many miles? 59,000 miles. Wow. What do you think? What do you guys, is this yours? Uh, it's my boss's. Oh, so yeah. How much do you think this is worth? How much do you think these guys, things are going for now? Hard to say? There's a lot of variants. Yeah. So anywhere from, I bet you anywhere from like 15,000 on the low end to probably 50,000 on the high end, right? It depends on where, where the thing falls. But yeah, this is where blazers were still blazers as opposed to <laughs> <laughs> mommy mobiles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I would bet, Brendan, that um, 99, no, let's go 999 out of 1,000 Cobras that you see are replicas. So you think this is real or you think it's a replica? I think it's a replica. I bet it's a replica. Check it out. Let's check it out. I'm sure it's a replica. Factory 5, right? There's a whole bunch of companies that do these. So yeah, it's a 1965 Cob Cobra uh, Roadster. Uh, With the 427. Replica, titled as a 2006 Cobra on Colorado assigned bin. So. You know, I if I were to buy one personally, yep. I think I would rather have the replica. Because think about it, if you had an original Cobra, would you ever really want to drive it? Because I would feel so scared every time I took it out on the road. I'm like, what if something happens? But if you've got a replica and something happens, yeah, it's a replica. It's a replica, yeah, yeah exactly right. Now, uh, here's an interesting kind of factoid that most people don't know. In Boulder, Colorado, by our old offices, is a Cobra Museum that's part of, I think it's the, um, I think it's the, the guy who's got the Utah car dealerships. Do you know his name? He's very, we were just at their sports campus uh, at the racetrack. Is it Larry H. Miller? I think it's Larry H. Miller. Oh, okay. Yeah, anyway. He, nice. Anyway, so they have a Cobra Museum in Boulder. It's only open on Saturday afternoons, and there's probably uh, a dozen authentic Cobras in that place. So if you're in Boulder and you want to see the real thing, they're there, you know. Several and that's, million, that's where authentic Cobras belong, is yeah. a museum for you to look at. But, but <laughs> you know, I'm sure it's one of these things where you buy it and you set up a museum because of tax reasons, right? Because it's only, like I say, open on Saturdays for like four or five hours. But if you're in Boulder, yeah. next to Celestial Seasonings, kind of tucked away in an industrial park, is a really cool Cobra museum. Um, so let's keep going. Uh, once again, I don't have a huge connection to 60s cars. Um, you know, I'm not a, I'm not a, child of the 60s, right? I grew up in my formative years in the 80s, right, when I was in high school. What, when, when were you in high school? I was, I graduated in 2004. Okay, so you're much younger than me. So, so you know, so to me the Z speaks a lot louder um, than the, is that a, I don't even know, is that an Impala? It's probably an Impala, right? I, mean, I should know what that is. That's an Impala. Yeah, and Chevy Impala, so it's a 64 Impala, right? Yep. But to me the Z just, just says more because this was a car that, you know, I kind of lusted after so when i was in high school uh, this would have been uh 1978 so this would have been like a you know like a seven eight year old car uh, and so it had just come out uh, and you know always fell in love with the z uh, this one looks relatively original i mean the, you know the, the thing that i'd be worried about when i'm seeing this is like you know like these like somebody do a wiper at it <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> That's the kind of thing I would have done in 1982. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it was done in 1982. So, yes, yeah, so I, I don't think authenticity was what they were going for. <laughs> <laughs> Come on over here. Here's another one that's kind of kind of doesn't speak to the authentic nature of of the beast. Uh, look at this uh, Corvette. Interesting, huh? 
Yeah, those are some interesting wheels for those, sure. Those are. Uh, so this is a 1987 Corvette uh, two-door convertible with uh, 109,000 miles. We were just looking at convertibles, so I actually drove one of these. Uh, uh, it wasn't quite as modded as this one. Somebody decided that, that uh, you know, the Corvette wasn't racy enough, so they did this big spoiler, they did the big body kit, um, and, you know, they did some, or maybe, I'm sure they did that. Look at the fake wood. That's interior. got acres of wood in there. Yeah, yeah. I like the red on red on red. On gold. <laughs> on gold. <laughs> <laughs> so once again, originality was not what these guys were going for, but nevertheless, you know, uh, this is uh, a vet that will be, I guess, sold tomorrow if it meets this reserve, if it has a reserve. Will they tell you if it has a reserve? I'm sure Yeah, any of the vehicles, I think, that yeah. uh, are no reserve like ours, yeah. it, uh, has a little pink no reserve slip on it. Okay, so if you see a pink slip, there's no reserve. Yep. What do you think of the Shelby? I think these are pretty cool. Yeah? Yeah. Convertible? Let's see what year this is. Um, so, weren't these over 500 horsepower too? Uh, these could have been. I, I don't recall. So this has a 5.4 liter 2007 GT 500 Mustang uh, Shelby. Uh, yeah, I think I think they were one of the first cars when you know before the muscle wars started, uh, or at the beginning of the muscle wars when we started to get serious horsepower in cars. Well, and what I think is interesting too is. Uh, not this exact body style, but the body style right after this yep. was actually the last Shelby that Carroll Shelby himself signed off on and approved. Yeah. So like if you got a 2012 or something. I know some stories about him that we probably can't tell on this channel, <laughs> <laughs> but he did sign a lot of cars. Yeah. So a Shelby signature is not as rare as you might believe. Uh, and yeah. speaking of muscle cars, here's another one that I'm very familiar with. Having, having owned, one. So this is, uh, we had a, what year is this? We had a, this is a 2020 uh, Challenger SRT Hellcat two-door coupe with only 2,667 miles. Barely so, broken in. Yeah, so from the factory, this is probably what, an $80,000 car? $75,000 oh, yeah. car? Yeah. So we had one of these, but we bought it there. too early. We bought it before the wide body came out. Uh, and the problem with it was um, the tires were just a little too thin. And so we put on 10,000 miles. In that 10,000 miles, you weren't with us yet, Brendan. Guess how many sets of tires we went through? Oh my God. I mean, in 10,000 miles on a car like this, mm -hmm. you should go through just what, one set of tires? Four. Four? <laughs> well, that's and, crazy. And they weren't asymmetrical, so you could swap them out. So we would, you know, we would burn through the rears, swap them, and then over that 10,000, we went through four sets of tires. That is, that is a lot of money spent just in rubber. And here's a little thing. The cool thing about this, of course, being a red-eye edition, the little Hellcat has a red eye. Oh, nice. 700 and uh, seven horsepower, if I remember right. Pretty well, easy. Well, geez, that's why he went through so many tires. Yes, of course. <laughs> well, you're going to get that many miles on a car. You're certainly going to, you know, Do you see that Z it. over there? Yeah, that one it. looks really nice. Let's check it out. This looks like a, you know, this looks like a little bit of a modded Z, right? Or yeah. Everything from the exhaust. Uh, this looks like somebody, you know, took this thing and, oh, for sure, look at the, uh, race seats inside. Look at the way they've done the engine. I think it's very really well presented. So this is a 72 240, um, which of course was the first year for the Z. Um, I got a rare opportunity to drive one of these from the uh, Nissan Historical Collection, which is now in uh, Nashville, Tennessee, and I fell in love with this car. And of course this one, like I said, it's been, I think, done up, maybe has a little bit more power to it, but I drove a bone stock one not very powerful, but this is the car that I would say is the most connected to your brain. When you're behind the wheel, right, you just feel like you become one with the machine. So not tons of power, but certainly tons of charisma and a huge amount of character. One of those cars where once you drive it once, there's two cars like that that I'll never forget, all right? So this was one of them, and I've, ever since then I've been longing and looking for one. Hard to find, really hard to find original because they don't usually, you know, they were inexpensive and then they bottomed out in terms of depreciation and then people would do things like this, right, where they would mod them, which is fine, but, you know, I love the originalness of it. So one of these cars, and I also got to drive, what's the other one you think that was like this that, I, that I'm lusting for? First generation car of, uh, of, an, of, a, of a hierarchy of cars that has become epic over the years. I'll give you a hint. Uh, they're on the eighth version of the car right now. Mark 8 is the current one. Holy cow. 
That is a tough question. Come on, just, it's a sports you, car? Yeah, I gave you, a, you guys know Mark 8. I said Mark 8, you know what it is. <laughs> You're just gonna have to tell Mark, me. A Mark 1 Volkswagen Golf GTI. Oh yeah. yeah, I could totally see that. Yeah, so that car, that's very similar to this, right? Not very powerful, but just such a wonderful car in terms of its engineering, how everything comes together to make the driving experience both uh, fantastic and fun at the same time, right? It just It's just hardwired to your brain. You just get a huge smile when you get behind the wheel. Everything works. Everything falls into place where it should be, and you're like, this is magic. How much horsepower did those things have? I don't think less than 100 horsepower at the time. And I don't think this thing had much more than 100. I could be wrong. Maybe yeah, this may have more. This may right. be more like 120, 130. Uh, but yeah, it wasn't huge. But everything was a bit lighter weight back then, right? So, so, so I don't want to make this about myself. We can't forget the Oldsmobile Bravada. This one, you don't even look at you even look at the <laughs> sign. It's, it's obvious <laughs> what this is. It was the official face field of the Indy Racing League. Wow. Interesting. Holy cow, yeah. You even got a picture of it up there. Yeah. That is, that is certainly unique. A 1999 Oldsmobile Bravada with uh, 12,466 miles and a paint job that is worth every penny. <laughs> <laughs> It'll surely get you attention. Uh, would you want to take that around a racetrack? <laughs> uh, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> is it pace car? <laughs> probably not. All right, so let's not make this about me. Uh, let's pick your favorite cars here. You've had a walk around. What, what, what jumps out at you? You like this uh, Corvette? Are you a Corvette guy? The Corvette's not bad. Um, what I actually really like is what's right in front of us here is this first generation Camaro, Camaro Z28. Oh, so you're a Camaro guy, huh? I wouldn't say I'm a Camaro guy. I'm a first gen Camaro guy. I'm with you too. I think that I, like, I like the first gen and I like the Smokey and the Bandit. Or was that a Trans Am? That was a Trans Am. Yeah, right. So that was a Pontiac. But those do look great too. They do look, yeah, they do look great. But I, I, I'm with you. Uh, these, these first gen Camaros, when you put some big tire on the back, uh, and you know, just incredibly clean lines, and of course, you know, Z28 is the one that everybody wants. Uh, I love the paint. I love the white racing stripe on it. It's really cool. You're right. Yeah, it's a, it's a good looking car. These are great. It's yeah. it's such a timeless design, and I think back in that late 60s, I mean, Chevy had a lot of hits. You know, they were doing the Camaro, the Nova, back then, the Corvette back then, all fantastic cars. Yeah, for sure, and. What makes it especially cool are those little, like, driving lights on the bottom, right? I think that must be a Z28 thing. Oh, and yeah. I, like I say, once again, not my generation of cars, so there are people who know a lot more about these cars, but that's what kind of is badass. And if we're talking about Camaro, we have to, of course, zip on over here uh, and end this up. I, can't, I don't mind those either, the 70s. Yeah, those aren't as bad, yeah, or those aren't too bad. I yeah. mean, I'd still prefer the first gens, yeah. but uh, these aren't bad looking, that's no, for I think, sure. I think they're pretty cool. You know, they, they completely changed, right? They went from kind of kind of butch and wide body to thin and sleek. Yeah. But still cool. But, of course, if we're talking about um, Camaros, we have to talk about Mustangs. Have you noticed that these first-generation Mustangs, I'm guessing here, they all tend to be either 64 and a half, 65, or 66. Because I really? want to say in those first three years, uh, Lee Iacocca, of course, is credited with coming up with this, where I took a Ford Fairlane and then, you know, made it into the sexy kind of sporty car and they sold millions of them. So let's see what years these are. I'm guessing 60, 64 and a half, 65 or 66. Let's see. Uh, always this like one's that. a 66. Okay. Yep. What's, and a, then what's, the what's a convertible? 66. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm always amazed by that. Is that are those seats original with the prancing horses like that? I don't know. They're pretty. They're pretty cool. I love the color. Yeah, it is. Yeah, well presented. Cer certainly well presented. I mean, I'm sure my wife would love this thing. She's yeah. a big Mustang fanatic. I think <laughs> that must be like like air conditioning, right? Okay, that I mean, looks it like sure it, looks like that it. It looks like air conditioning. Yeah, 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 yeah. These these cars are just there's something magic about them. I think any age. Uh, that you can be at, this still speaks to people, right? It, you can be six or you could be 60 and, and you immediately get pulled to the design of this car. It just, it's just so, so like America. Absolutely, right? yeah, affordable. it's iconic. Yeah, what, what isn't affordable <laughs> <laughs> probably is, is the, the only Porsche here. <laughs> we might, might as well end on <laughs> a little bit of German speed. Uh, 2005 911. Carrera, convertible. 
$89,000, and it runs great. Um, you know, 911s are really hard to get nowadays. Uh, if you go to the Porsche dealership, you will not find any 911s there. You will find Taycans, you will find Caymans, Macans, McCanns, but not a 911. What's this coming down the road here? A truck. Looks oh, like a here. Chevy truck. Yeah, I think it's a Chevy, yeah. yeah. I thought he was going to come through here. It looks like he's not coming through here. See, that's the cool thing is you've still got cars coming in. Even with as cool of a collection as we have here, hey, hey, there's still a ton to come. checking out your power of tower there. Look at that. I see that. Yeah, yeah they're that. interested. Let's in on that dude. Yeah, he's, he's, let's go ask him. Let's go talk to him. Let's sure. Maybe he, was, maybe he was like, you know, let's see what he thinks of it. I'm curious. Tell the V8, right? Immediately. Oh, yeah. I wonder what he's looking for. Maybe this guy knows all about these. Well, I like Rams. this GMC Suburban coming in, yeah. too. That's nice. So what do you think of this guy? Looks interesting. Yeah. Sorry, we're we're doing a little video about this. This is he brought this in. What make are you are you gonna bid on this guy? It's possible. Yeah. 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 You like? Are you are you a Ram guy? No, not really. No? It, just, it just caught my eye. Yeah. Yeah. There's something about it, isn't there? Yeah. Yeah. Is this your car? It's his car. It's mine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's selling it. He's selling it without reserve. I yeah. see that. That's yeah. why I caught my eye. Yeah. yeah, and the miles on there are actual. So the 61,500 are actual yeah, miles. Actual miles. Yep. Yeah. We ran the Carfax and verified it, and there's no oil leaks on it whatsoever. This thing runs great. Are you from around here, out of state? Oh, no, we're from Colorado. Yeah. 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 No, I just, I'm just, you know, I'm just looking for uh, something, you know, Farm cheap, truck. Cheap, yeah, farm cheap, truck. Farm yeah. truck. Yeah. Yeah. And this, this one isn't burdened with the extra weight of four-wheel drive so <laughs> exactly yep <laughs> so better fuel economy <laughs> yeah that's a slant six right it is yep the power leaning of, tower of power, power. <laughs> <laughs> I remember reading about that when i was young that was quite an engine, Good engine. yeah it, yeah uh, it, it, there's a quite a following on the leading tower of power well yeah, good, good luck tomorrow. to be reliable we'll, so yeah yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll, nice we'll, to meet you yeah nice, nice to meet, to meet you, you yeah we hope you can actually you know hope you get uh, good money yeah i don't get it Okay. <laughs> well, hopefully you get to take it home tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> That's a lot of truck, isn't it? It is. It's it is a, lot a lot of truck. Of truck. Yeah. Well, there you have it, guys. A little preview of the specialty car auction here at the Budweiser Event Center in Loveland, Colorado, at the Good Guys Auction. Uh, come on by. You know, enjoy uh, the Good Guys. There's a really great rib shop just down the road. You want to do some ribs after this? Are you up for ribs? Sure, I'm uh, down for ribs. All right, we're going to go do some ribs after this. Uh, and yeah, come and bid on any of these cars. And uh, like I say, if it were my money, I'd probably go for the power wagon, but that's going to be expensive. This is much more affordable. Yeah. All right, see you guys <laughs> next time. Ciao. Bye.